Who is man? What goes inside his heart? When I meditate on the energy of man, I feel most men are like unfinished temple. There are no doors, no windows. Sometimes they they are incomplete and messy. And sometimes the no doors allow the light to come in. And many times it invites thunderstorms, dust, dirt, or just anyone. The point is, do we need to accept that its beauty may not be in making it a complete temple? Maybe the beauty is in its acceptance. Or maybe the beauty is in learning its incompleteness, its unfinished journey. Or maybe something needs to be fixed there. Today, let's dive into the unfinished, messy sacredness of men. I am Chandresh Bhardwaj and this is Break the Norms. Namaste everyone. I hope you are safe and well wherever you are right now. Before we dive into today's topic, a great, beautiful, happy announcement that the applications for the second round of Leela School are open now. You can apply to be the student for its next round starting in September. The September uh, content, material of study, will be a lot more than what's included in the first batch. There are new lectures on Goddess Kali, on Tantra, a lot more meditations, a lot more discussions, and you will have access to all of that. Visit leelagurukul.com to study, to read what we are offering right now. And if your interest is in deepening your meditation and unleashing that healing potential you have, I highly suggest that you explore what Leela Gurukul has to offer and it will be absolutely my delight to have you in the school. I'm loving how the students in the current batch are responding to the program. It feels unbelievably amazing and beautiful and I hope you can be a part of it as well. Visit leelagurukul.com, apply, let's talk on the Zoom and we can answer your doubts, your concerns, your questions and get the ball rolling. And now coming to today's topic. This was a topic I was avoiding for the longest. Many people shared with me, you talk a lot about feminine, but you never talk about the divine masculine. You never talk about men or you rarely talk about men or divine masculine. You should do it more. And I don't know why I did not bring the divine masculine so much in the podcast or in my writings. I think one of the reason was, of course, it is too personal, too sensitive and even uncomfortable to start talking about the challenges of the masculine or men. And this is uh, an episode where I will uh, specifically talk about uh, gender. Usually I talk about masculine and feminine. Uh, This one is more around men in general, uh, but also of course the masculinity is a part of it. I don't know what will be the final title of this episode because uh, the episode, the title that I was really playing with for a long time was why do men get angry because I have seen no matter what you uh, label the uh, scattered unconscious masculinity you can call it toxic masculinity you can call it suppressed masculinity but one interesting thing that I have noticed is all of this toxic energy or heavy energy or unconscious energy finds only one outlet and that's violence, anger. I have seen plenty of men in my life who choose anger or maybe they don't choose it. 
anger happens to be that one outlet for all of them. This was my observation as a child, as a teenager, as an adult, and even I've shared with you even one of the things that I had to work on the most was my anger. Now it takes a lot to piss me off and whenever anyone uh, makes me angry, I pause to just reflect on the, the power of that person who is uh, bringing out that anger in me because it doesn't happen so often. Uh, but this is the question that I wanted to just uh, put it out there. Why are men angry? Why do they choose anger? as their most common expression. And this anger doesn't always have to be uh, directed toward others. It's a lot of anger within, because what you see in that toxic masculinity out there, the aggression, the violence, uh, even brutal things like rape, murder, uh, abuse, all of that is a symptom of something deeper going on. And whenever I explore the depth, the root reason of why a man could do something so brutal, so terrible, uh, there are many interesting observations that show up. And it's obviously not uh, possible to discuss all of that in a podcast. We need number of books to discuss that. And today I, I want to just put this energy out there that Let's understand why men get angry. What's the toxic part in that toxic masculinity everyone wonders about? And finally, how can we heal this? How can we bring harmony to that scattered unconscious masculinity? I need your open heart, open mind, your cooperation in taking this conversation further. There were many stories which made me uncomfortable, emotional, uh, because I have been speaking to plenty of men uh, for a good amount of time to just observe uh, what's happening. And the many things when I was hearing, it just reminded me of my own journey in many way. And uh, it felt uh, emotional, it felt uh, vulnerable. And that's when I, I thought, let, let me do an episode on this because I think the time is here and I just need to gather enough courage and strength for it. Now, when you see this anger, aggression, violence in men, do you wonder why is it so difficult for a man to be vulnerable? Why is it uh, so difficult for a man to express you know, his feelings? Are men born violent? Are are they born uh, angry from day one? Good news is, they are not. Every human is born with Shuddha Chaitanya, the energy of pure consciousness, which means it's a fertile ground. You can plant any seeds on it. There is absolutely no difference uh, in any human who's born. Each one is born with this pure consciousness. Now, there are physical differences that nature has gifted a man and woman with. There are uh, natural uh, sexual orientations, emotional energies, and all the stuff that nature is cultivating in us. But no one is born angry. That I can tell you. No one is born angry. We are born happy, playful, curious, uh, interesting uh, gift of this divine art. But things start to go wrong somewhere, right? Because what we see around us is obviously not at all an expression of curiosity or pure consciousness. And what I'm going to share has, uh, you know, its origin in, in my journey, in journey of many men that I've been speaking to, because I, I knew I cannot just uh, share the Tantra uh, perspective on it. I need to share the psychological, the daily drama that, that men have to go through. Uh, so this is going to be a mix of many interesting observations and I think one of the observations that I want to put out there is this statement, be a man enough or what kind of man are you? I think it's one of the most toxic thing that a man has to go through when they are told to be a man enough or, or man up or what kind of man 
would do this what kind of man would cry what kind of man uh, would lose money in business men have their own suppression to deal with and here's the interesting thing that women have fixed but men are not getting ready to fix that i feel both men and women have been suppressed for centuries right the suppression of women may look different than suppression of men but suppression is suppression right ultimately it destroys your fragrance but there came a time when the goddess energy in the women start to you know wake up and they were like let's do protest let's create this revolution let's liberate ourselves sexually emotionally spiritually and women started to make effort to do that and right now the divine feminine expression we see is the result of that revolution that women started women started to embrace that they don't need to fit into one box they don't need to be just a wife a mother they don't don't need to be uh just how the society wants them to be they could be anything they could be a wife they could be a mother they could be a daughter but they could also be any other multi dimensional being and it's not been an easy journey for women obviously but the effort is there they are doing their best every other day uh, i see women who are fighting the good fight to go deeper in their feminine self and that looks beautiful that feels beautiful but the problem is men are not getting ready for it it took me the longest time to be ready for certain things and i know there are many other things that i still need to touch on it's difficult it's just heavy to do that men are expected to play certain roles just like women but the roles are different when you come across a financially successful man it looks normal right it looks okay when you come across a financially successful woman you add a little extra compliment to her because you're like i haven't seen enough women who are very successful in in financial world or wall street or or whatever business but here you are a woman and you're doing this and we have invented new labels for them boss babe and all of that stuff but for a man to not be financially successful it's seen as a huge insult to them i've spoken to many men and they they tell me this uh pain they have to go through from family from friends from society that if they were not able to uh, make money or be successful by certain age they have to go through a lot of shame and the other shame they shared was the sexual performance that they have to live up to every man is expected to be this macho man in bed and the truth is it actually limits them to express themselves sexually the emotions are gone because they are so focused on the performance and this is something i have heard this is something i have felt the effects of that your sexual performance has to define your manhood your sexual performance has to define who you are as a man and the boys talk revolve around this women judge men based on this i have come across many conversations where men are completely judged on these two factors the financial performance and the sexual performance and then men start to see this whole thing as a power play they start to feel uh, the need to cultivate more power and guess what power doesn't come alone power brings aggression power brings competition power uh, doesn't believe in emotions it gets dirty it gets abusive it gets aggressive controlling possessive but the truth is we need to understand that we don't need to have the love for power but we need to understand the power of love the love is gone the power remains and the result is a messy scattered unconscious masculinity So next time if you compliment a man based on their sexual performance or their financial success let them also know that they are much more than that 
that these things don't define them. Just the way the world is making an effort to let the women know that their physical beauty doesn't define them, right? That their motherhood doesn't define them. They're much more than that. Let's also take this moment to let the men know that they could be doing their best or doing whatever they feel they could do sexually or financially let's accept them for who they are and trust me when you share this with a man you'll see a different light in their eyes because for the first time they'll see that they don't have to live up to a certain uh, performance in sex or a certain performance in their bank balance to be accepted as a man this is the struggle they go through and it's really the anger of not being seen and not being accepted. But the problem is men themselves are not aware that this is the problem because the wiring is so deep. The patriarchy has convinced them that they need to be sexually aggressive. They need to make money. Doesn't matter how they make it. They have to do it by hook or by crook. And that's why this aggression comes into the, the money-making strategies they, they go through. That's why the aggression comes in sex. That's why they're not able to express their emotions when they come across any sexual uh, act. Because for them, it's all a power play. The benchmark of masculinity is just very toxic. It's unhealthy. I have come across men who feel guilty if they have to take a rest if they have to take a vacation because the men in their family have never taken rest they have always been working non-stop they've always been working around the clock so their kids now they have this benchmark that you should not be taking rest you should not express the feelings and guess what these kind of habits will do they'll make you angry because we all need rest we all need vacation we all need to accept that i'm tired and and sometimes i just need to take a break sometimes for no reason i can block three days in my calendar because i need to relax recharge and self-reflect the generation today you know the so-called uh woke generation or the new age uh I, I can see many men and women make this effort to just block the calendar and just take the time to self-reflect. But for majority of population, for a huge number of population, maybe at least 95% or more than 95% population, they don't know how to pause, how to take rest, how to take a day off without you know any guilt. I have known men who have never taken any day off. And whenever they take a day off, they engage in some other heavy work because they cannot sit idle. Not because they are restless or, or anxiety is, is going on. It's because they're wired to keep doing something so that they are seen as some sort of productive member of the family. So this entire statement, be a man, let it go. Because the nature, the God, the divinity, the universe has not created separate human beings. Why are we trying to split man into many personalities? Let's not do that. Because the way we are dividing the energy of man, they are becoming battleground. There is a battleground in every man. I have one in me, let me tell you that. And one of my biggest intention in life and i've shared that probably plenty of times two intentions i keep inviting every day is freedom and courage and people who know me closely they're like uh, what kind of freedom do you want don't you have enough freedom already what kind of courage do you want we don't think you you, you lack courage but i cannot open all the books in my heart and tell them i still crave freedom because the patriarchy has messed up all of us, everyone out there, in every culture. We need the courage. Sometimes I need to be in the battlefield just to show that there was someone in the battlefield. And it's not about winning. Sometimes it's just to show that someone was there and we need the freedom and courage. Today I'm making this episode with a lot of courage. I'm 
recording this episode with that freedom of expression and it doesn't come naturally it comes with a certain pause a certain reflection a certain meditation and my request to all the men who are listening and all the women who are listening let's not divide a man into multiple personalities let's accept them as they are let's not uh, put this unnecessary heaviness on them that they need to be too many things for too many people and they need to perform and get a grade in everything i think it would be so fascinating and so beautiful to see men as humans just the way i've always encouraged to see women as just awareness that's so beautiful and the reason i do it because i knew i wanted to change my perspective of the feminine and why i needed to change that because the masculinity is made to believe that woman is an object and i grew up uh, watching the abuse of women uh, in india and i after i moved out of india i've seen it in in us when i travel i see it everywhere and i knew to bring a positive change i have to shift my perspective of the feminine because only then i can contribute toward the strength of women and today i'm saying let's also shift the perspective toward men let's not divide them let's not make them feel uh that they have an obligation to live up to some sort of performance because they don't and the second thing that i'm going to share might blow your mind it it blew my mind uh if you trace the spiritual traditions you know hundreds of years ago thousands of years ago you won't see many women or maybe no women in many spiritual schools if you go back to hundreds of years ago even not hundreds maybe 100 year ago you won't see many women it's mostly men's club to lead the spiritual show to run the church the temple the the spirituality and everything it's always been the men's club and when many were, people asked me this why there were not women gurus and i started asking this to my gurus that why uh, there were not uh, any female gurus why it was always led by men so i got many answers but the answer that's very relevant for this episode is very interesting so i got to know that of course women were not allowed to take part in many spiritual activities or they were not allowed to uh, be the spiritual seekers in that traditional spiritual school setting or i mean religion was always very very rigid and uh, abusive and uh, i think they objectified women of course also in in many ways and talking about all the cultures and religions out there i don't think there was enough respect for women uh, in in most religions uh, but tantra became one of this very revolutionary powerful spiritual science tantra made it very clear that women are superior more powerful for that spiritual enlightenment that spiritual awakening than men because they started seeing the science of masculinity versus the feminine energy and they made some conclusions and they said women are ready and receptive than men and one of the things that i got to know is so beautiful so interesting tantra said that women go through the monthly periods menstruation and in those 4 to 5 days they go through so much pain irritation anger confusion uh the energy is so low and they release so much blood they release so much energy in those 4 or 5 days and it's terrible but guess what starts to happen after they release that heavy energy the rest of the month is much more vital playful sensual relaxed and the beauty of feminine is in this playfulness and according to tantra they are able to experience this sensuality and playfulness is because they are 
they release so much of that heaviness in those five days. And guess what happens with the men? They don't have any menstruation time. They don't have any periods. So piling up of that heaviness is constantly there, but there is no release. So this is why you know, you'll never see a, a man going through that kind of irritation or that anger or confusion that a woman would go through in periods. But that's also why you will never see a man experiencing that lighter energy, that playfulness, that sensuality in him, because he's not uh, created that way to release that heaviness. And this creates its own interesting problem for men, because they are not equipped to release those heavy emotions, or they are not trained to release those heavy emotions either. And that's only a recipe for anger. It only cultivates more and more anger because if I am not trained or allowed to express my emotions, I'll only be anger. Then only option I'll have is to be angry. And this is why plenty of men are angry. And when you look at the way they were raised, the benchmarks they had in their family, the lack of emotional training they have had, you'll see the reason is very clear that they were just given one emotion and that was anger, violence, aggression, and they pretty much grew up around these elements and nothing else. And to conclude this episode, I want to encourage the women, the men out there that let's encourage men to share their feelings. Let's create safe space for them to express what they're going through. Let's make them realize when you were born, the nature did not create any significant differences between you and the woman and the other genders. And there are certain emotions which are applicable and universal and fully present in all of us. Then why are you sticking with just one emotion? And let me also reveal a secret here today. When I write my poetry, I always get interesting messages. Who's inspiring this poetry? Uh, you must have gone through something really crazy because you're writing this intense poetry. The truth is, the reason I write poetry because that is one of the most healing and potent ways to heal the heavy masculinity that for me that's one of the safest prayers that I can put out there so it's a complete selfish act of healing my own masculinity and I encourage that you find your safe prayer to heal your masculinity once you find it let it expand let it flow because we really need a new strength a new expression a new awareness for the men because they, these times, they demand vulnerability, they demand courage, they demand a more deeper, poetic, mystic, spiritual expression. And it's going to be a combination of all these elements that will define the new man for all of us. And I hope you and I witness it in this lifetime. Thank you for listening. I'll speak to you next week. I hope this podcast may travel through the untapped universe of your darkness, light, courage, passion, and so much more. Please do subscribe and be ready to break your norms. I am so excited and very honored to be part of your sacred journey through this podcast.